So one of the main things I sought after with building out this side project is I wanted to figure out how to allow clients to basically hook in custom domains and allow that to access the application behind the scenes. So if you're not caught up with this little prototype I've been building out, basically it's like a bolt.new or a lovable type of clone, except for I'm keeping it as simple as possible. So this is my current website, right? And I can go here and I can refine a page or I could refine the whole website and ask it to change styles or change the top header or the footer or something. But honestly, the whole reason I built this project was because I wanted to figure out how to allow users to set up custom domains, right? That's something I never set up before. I kind of assumed it's not something that's too difficult to do, but it's just, again, one of those hurdles you have to jump over to convince yourself you can do it. And then once you've done it, you're like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through how I got this set up. It's, it's a little complicated, but hopefully by watching this, you can actually understand yourself how you can set up a similar feature. We're gonna try to start fresh. I'm gonna make a brand new project, and then that should hopefully redirect me to my app I might have to just hard refresh again. This is a prototype, a glorified pl prototype. So I have my application right here. Let's just do a quick refinement. I'm gonna say change the heading to say web dev Cody, please subscribe. And let's just go ahead and kick that off. So that's gonna kick off an asynchronous action. I am using Convex for everything here. Um, I've been using Convex on my channel for a while now. But you'll see that this should create a new project with that project ID. And the entire page is actually using an iframe. If I were to inspect this page and look, there's an iframe, which I kind of talked about in some other videos, that's pointing to simplesitecrafter.com and every project gets its own little project ID right here. So I could actually just go and, you know, if I wanted to click on this, I can view the page outside of the actual Simple Site Crafter. And this is your site, right? This is how it looks like. Um, you can click around. If there's multiple pages, we'd actually be able to navigate uh, between them. And there you have it. It refreshed the iframe under the hood and it says Web Dev Cody, please subscribe. So now that you have your site, how do you actually allow a custom domain to point to it? It turns out Cloudflare has something very cool that you can use to basically achieve this. So if you go to Cloudflare and create a site, in the SSL options, you can go to custom host names and they have something called Cloudflare for SaaS. So I would recommend reading through this um, there's probably limitations for how many domains you can have set up before they force you to upgrade to like an enterprise plan and basically charge you a ton of money. But this is the fastest way I could figure out how to achieve this without having to like set up my own infrastructure with like Caddy and doing my own like Let's Encrypt protocols or whatever. So the way this works is you can actually hit the Cloudflare API to set up custom host names. And once someone has a custom host name, you can point the traffic to go to, for example, I'm actually sending the traffic to a Cloudflare worker. So if I go to my worker routes, you will see I have a route for star slash star that invokes a worker. And then the worker is going to basically fetch the website static assets like the HTML files, the CSS, images, etc. And that is going to send it back to the request. So what I just said might be a little confusing. So I am gonna walk you through a diagram of how this kind of all works and disregard anything that's like a dotted line. Those are like me just asking myself questions of like, is this the best way to build this? It's very good when you're designing something to think about all the edge cases, like what's the best approach for saving costs? What's the best approach for performance? What's the best approach for not having a system that's brittle? If someone were to DDoS this, will it bring down everyone's website or will it just bring down one person's? These are things you have to consider. But the way this is working is I have a domain called thumbnailcritique.com and that's currently in Namecheap as you can see here. And if I go back to my project, I'm trying to point thumbnailcritique.com to this project, right? So I'm gonna click add custom domain. And I'm gonna say thumb, actually I'm gonna paste this in thumbnailcritique.com and I'll click add domain. And so what this is doing behind the scenes is it's going to make a request to Cloudflare to add that custom domain which we should see here, if I go back here and just refresh, you should see my thumbnailcritique.com be added as a custom host name for what I kind of talked about, okay? Okay, so you can see here it's been added dynamically, and now there's a couple things we need to do. The first thing is we need to add text records to our DNS provider here so that it knows how to validate the certificate. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this command. In fact, I don't need the copy from here. A user can just copy it from here. They click it, there we go, it's copied. And then I'm gonna add a record. I do believe I need to add in a text record. So let's do text record. I'm gonna paste in just the, the prefix here. I don't need to do the, the, the whole thing. 
And then I'm going to copy this one and I'll paste that in and I'll click save. And then we also want to set up a C name. So I'm going to go here and just do C name, paste in, I think technically I just put an add symbol. That's typically how it works. And then I'll take that value and I'm going to point that to my project ID dot simple site crafter dot com. And I will also save that. Now I will say when I was trying to do this, there was a third text record that popped up for me, which is not showing right now. Um, it's also not showing here. So I'm kind of confused as to why I'm missing that. It's like almost like when you do it for the first time, it gives you a an additional text record. But right now it's not. So I'm, I'm guess I'm kind of confused about that. I think it might have been related to this ACM challenge. Maybe that's not needed. Maybe it is. I don't really know. Honestly, again, I'm still trying to figure this out. But once you have this set up, eventually Cloudflare will say, okay, both are active. Pretty cool. And then we can go to our domain, thumbnailcritique.com. And if you look at here, it's hosting your application. So just to show that this is actually like the live website, if I go back to my app over here, and if I go to, um, why wasn't my header showing before? Oh, I scrolled down. Let's go back over to Plain Salmon, which is the name of a project. We can make a full site change. I'm gonna say, can you please change the color theme to be green? Let's just refine the site and this should modify the home page and maybe the style.css. And then once it's done, I should be able to just refresh my actual domain. And since they're both pointing to the same like project domain under the hood, uh, we should see a change. Okay, so now it's all green. So our site actually has that green theme to it. And if we wanted to, we can roll it back. So I'll just roll it back and then refresh. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't roll back the styles yet. That's something I got to figure out. And let me roll this forward. That's for the text on the landing page. Okay, that's been updated. Yeah, so that seems like it's working. So let's take a step back to Excalibur and kind of figure out how this is working for the entire system in case you guys are curious. So what I showed you was I created a C name and I'm pointing it to the project ID simple site crafter.com. And that, if I go back to Cloudflare and go to my DNS settings, let's do this. You'll see I have a quadruple A type with a star and then also 100 colon colon. I don't know what this is, honestly, but from what I understand, it's telling Cloudflare that, hey, any traffic that comes in to a subdomain, go ahead and route it to like some internal system. And that internal system allows me to kick off a Cloudflare worker. Also, I don't think I need this uh, quadruple A record. Again, sometimes when you're prototyping, you add in too much stuff and stuff that you don't even need. And then you come back through and you actually pinpoint like, did I actually need to add this record or not to get this working? And unfortunately with DNS and DNS propagation and caching, it's sometimes very hard to know what or what you don't need, but I'll figure it out. So this actually is going to allow a Cloudflare worker to pick up that request. So if I go over to the Cloudflare worker, you'll see I have a, a route set up. So basically all traffic that comes in, I want to just invoke my worker function. If I go to my worker function, you'll see that every request is actually going to call that worker. So Again, I'm pointing the domain to use the worker and then the Cloudflare worker, depending on the path and the project ID, it's going to look up the files that are associated with that project and basically take them from the convex storage that that's where I'm storing them convex and then convex sends over the HTML, the CSS file or whatever through the worker and then the worker sends that back all the way to the user's browser where they're able to see the site. Okay. Is this the most performant approach? I don't know. Is this the most cost effective approach? I don't know. All I do know is that everyone's site is basically served through a Cloudflare worker. So I do know it's scalable. And that's kind of the first thing I wanted to do when I built this out. It's like, I want to make sure that I don't have a single point of failure. That's kind of like the overview. Now I do want to share a little bit of code with you guys, since you guys could be curious about how this kind of works. So I do have like a proxy file. And if I go and load up that, that code, let me um, close out some of this stuff. So if I load up that proxy file, this is what's running on the Cloudflare worker. Basically, I get a request and I'm accepting all routes with this star. This is using Hono, by the way. So when a request comes in, all I do is I just basically check the host name. And if it has a project ID in the subdomain, I basically will look up the file. So over here, you'll see here, get project ID from host name which you'll see this just basically takes the first token from the full host. And this is used for previews. So like if I go back to my app, this is actually doing an iframe with that preview mode. If I click it, 
uh, you'll see that it has a path over here. It's the project ID, simplesitecrafter.com, right? Um, otherwise, I actually need to look it up. So that does a query to Convex that says, hey, I have a host name of studygroupfinder.com or thumbnailcritique.com. Go and look up what the project ID is. And so that actually has to do like a request to Convex and get the data. I could add in some caching. Like I did start prototyping using uh, Cloudflare's KD to cache this information, make it a lot faster. But again, I like to make it work, make it right, and then make it fast. And I don't want to worry about making it fast just yet. I want to just worry about making sure all this is connected and it seems like it's pretty good. So now that I have the project ID, I look at the path of the request. So if it's like slash, you know, if it's just like the, you know, the root slash, I then go to Convex and I say, hey, give me the page metadata that's associated with that. And then I go back and I say, hey, give me the file that's associated with that page. So again, there's some things I could probably improve. I'm doing like three separate API calls to Convex to get this data. I could probably consolidate it into one or find a different way to do this so it's going to be much faster. Even storing the, the HTML or the CSS files inside of Cloudflare R2 may allow it to all run from the same data center which could probably improve some some performance so like if you see over here i have uh, a question that i kind of asked myself is instead of storing the file uh inside of convex which is currently where i'm storing like these files i could store them in r2 which means that they're probably living close in the same data center and there's probably some cost savings there and also some performance benefits there so that's something I could probably experiment with. But again, it's I don't need to worry about that just yet. I want to get this working. And then we send the file back and attach some metadata and do some hacky stuff with like injecting a script tag, which I probably should not do on a production site, uh, only the preview sites. And then also I'm setting some like no cache headers, which probably isn't a good idea, especially since if I want this stuff to be cached in Cloudflare CDN, I should probably not add these. But that's how the, the preview kind of works. There's a lot of other code I can kind of talk about, but that's I just want to talk about the proxy. I'm calling this like the proxy. Right now it's a Cloudflare worker, but I'm calling it a proxy. Some other things I kind of asked myself when trying to prototype this out was, let's say this stuff is kind of costly, right? Typically when you're doing serverless deployments and Lambda and Cloudflare Worker, it's pay per request and you can have a bill that starts to run away. And so one of the approaches that I thought to prevent that was, okay, what if I, instead of having a Cloudflare Worker, I could instead just have like a Go proxy or some type of like static file host and put Caddy in front of it. And then I could have Caddy do like the certificate signing and then users could point their domain to Caddy, um, which would then request to a Go proxy, and the Go proxy could then fetch the files from Convex and fetch the, the metadata from Convex as well. And then I could have some type of caching system built directly into here, like I could have Redis or something, like if I just wanted to you know, put Redis for a cache, or maybe there's like Varnish or whatever, Nginx stuff. Again, these are questions you should ask yourself when you're designing a system, but I just didn't like the idea of having a single point of failure so that if someone DDoSes this VPS, that means that everyone who's using your hosting is going to go offline and that wouldn't really be something great, right? You really wouldn't want your whole hosting service to go offline. And you can see I have like a little note about that over here. So I guess leave a comment uh, if you have any other alternative suggestions of how my setup is and like how you might prevent um, runaway bills with using a Cloudflare worker. I also thought about maybe I could just use Convex to do all this. Like instead of having a Cloudflare worker, I could just have a Convex query or a Convex HTTP endpoint that I could probably origin that. I could point that as an origin so that it could just redirect that traffic. But that would require me having to dive into how Cloudflare kind of works with that whole DNS 100 colon colon routing. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to figure this out, but this was some magic thing I had to figure out to even point the traffic to the Cloudflare worker. So if I change that, I don't know how I'd change it to point to, um, I'd have to change this and have it point to actual convex, I think. Like maybe this would be a C name, I don't know. But there's limitations when you're using AWS or Cloudflare, there's always limitations, right? There's always a hard limit of how many custom DNS records you can have or how many custom host names you can have. I think it's like a thousand or a hundred or something. So eventually if I had like a bunch of premium users, which I do plan to uh, paywall a custom domain behind like a premium user, because I think these things cost money. Like after a hundred, it's like 10 cents per domain. Um, so I, yeah, I would want to paywall that and have that be a premium feature. 
But my point is, is that there's always limitations. So keep that in mind when you're building out systems is that you need to go and research what are the, the hard limits on Cloudflare in regards to custom host names. What are the hard limits on Cloudflare in terms of DNS records? At what point are they going to basically force you to upgrade from your pre free plan to a enterprise or a pro plan? I guess just keep that in mind. So anyway, this was the overview of this. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you guys have a comment or suggestion, leave it below. But other than that, I'm going to try to stay focused and just keep working on this. I'm having fun. I think we're making some good progress. I got like a legit little static website builder kind of all created. I did a lot of AI coding. This was exclusively like AI first coding. So I'd basically just prompt cursor to add in a feature. And then I come through and like fix it up when it messed up. So I was able to make quite a lot of progress using cursor after work at night to get this stuff kind of set up. So I'm kind of happy with the progress. Other than that, I guess have a good day and happy coding.